let's start off with a question. Raise your hand if you are a multitasker or if you've ever multitasked. Okay, how about the people online? Hands up. My question is, has anyone never multitasked? I don't think so. But there could be, I suppose, because we are always doing a lot of different things. But here's the truth. The truth is, you cannot multitask. Did you know that? I didn't really know that until I started to study this. Um, Divine Audacity, again, it's the book by Linda Martellowitz set, and it is on the 12 powers, which we are studying, and we're on the power of power. And she says, we cannot multitask. We can only focus on one thing at a time. Attempts to multitask lead to rapid switching from one focus to another, reducing our attention on anything and diminishing the quality of our focus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Concentration is the opposite of and the antidote for multitasking. With its false promise of increasing achievement, which you think, oh, I'm going to get more done, we're actually getting less done when we're jumping back and forth. She says, our concentration ability is the power of single mindfulness. Concentration intensifies the way a laser intensifies light. The way a laser intensifies light. Thinking about light, LED lights are normal lights. They're diffused lighting. That is diffused, directed light. However, a laser beam is when it's concentrated into a single point. It is fully concentrated. So what can a laser beam do? <laughs> well, it can cut through metal and steel. It can, uh, you know, mel welding. Uh, it's used in laser printers to read Blu-ray and DVDs. How many of you perhaps have ever had LASIK eye surgery? You know, it's used in surgeries now. Barcode readers depend upon laser. Fiber optic technology is laser. And if you ever get a tattoo removal, <laughs> that's also laser uh, focused. So laser is that power. It's a lot more powerful than our diffuse lighting. So has anyone here ever taken a magnifying glass and put it in the sun and looked at, try to get the sun to start a fire with paper? If you haven't, you know of that experiment. And the goal is you've got to have it placed just right so that the sun directly through it hits in a single concentrated focused point. If you're too far away or too close, it's not going to work. So again, it's that power of our focus that we're talking about. And in Linda Martellowitz Set's book, she breaks down the power of power. We talked the last couple weeks about two aspects of power. The first one, who remembers? I know it's two weeks ago, so I'm stretching you. But I gave you a quiz last week. The first week of August, we focused on the aspect called self. Starts with an M. Oh, there you go. See, you have such a good teacher up here. She'll just give you little hints and clues. Good thing you're not getting graded. So self-mastery. Okay, then we had last week. Okay, I know it's another one. What might have been last week's? Spiritual authority. There you go. Put it on her chart. <laughs> Spiritual authority. So today, it's the power of power that we use as concentration. So we want to know, what is concentration? Well, concentration is our ability to direct our focus and attention according to our will. You know, you can have 
thoughts, but don't let your thoughts have you. Anybody? Right? We can control what we're thinking about. If you have a thought that's, you can say cancel, cancel, and I can redirect my thought into something else. That's what I talked about in the daily word. It's the ability to, here's that word, focus the mind on one subject, one activity, or thought, at the same time excluding all other distracting thoughts, feelings, sensations. Again, it means that you're doing one thing at a time. One thing at a time. I don't know about you, but I, I'm not a master at this at all. I'm doing one thing, but am I focused on that thing? Often not. And it's not bad or wrong, but there is something about concentration, and we're going to talk about why it's important to have that skill. It's a mental muscle. You know, you got physical muscles, we got mental muscle, and there is a muscle that we can develop called concentration. Again, it's the state. Not like, you know, Ohio is a state, but it is a state in which one's whole intention is engrossed in something so that everything else becomes oblivious. How many of you have ever had a kid who's playing and they're so into their play that they can't hear you calling their name? Anyone? Right? They're just, and how about yourself? Have you ever been like in a watching a movie or, or well, let's say reading a book that's really got your attention and somebody's talking to you or you're so engrossed in something that you're not you're oblivious to what's going on right we've all had that we all have the ability to concentrate and usually it's on something that we love something that is we're interested in however how's your concentration when you don't want to be into it. You have a class that you have to take. Statistics. Oh yeah. Something fun like that. Some of you might like statistics. But, but it's something that doesn't have interest, no passion, and I have to study. I'm sorry. My concentration is going to be like, what else can I think about or think we see? I did go to the movies um, this last Friday. Yes. And I saw a couple movies. First one was Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris delightful movie. And then, yeah, I went and saw it. Top Gun. <laughs> They're both great movies, but I'll tell you what, I was more captured by which one? <laughs> Top Gun. Because it was so intense. My focus, I never thought about what time is it and is the movie going to be over and how much more time do I have. Mrs. Harris, it was a nice, feel-good movie. And yet, I wasn't as focused in that movie. I did probably check my clock a couple times just because I wasn't as focused. But it was very interesting. Both movies are excellent. I was very impressed. It's interesting to see Tom Cruise looking older, too. You know, I'm so used to his baby face. Um, but he's still looking good. <laughs> so there's another kind of focus um, or concentration because we can have concentrated attention, and that's when you're liking something and you're interested in it. There's something else called true concentration. It's more of a conscious and intended process in which you focus your mind at will whenever you want on whatever subject for a certain period of time and not just for a few seconds. It is the ability to focus the mind not only on pleasurable and enjoyable activities and things you love, but also on those chores and tasks, your work, your studies, and on anything boring and uninteresting <laughs> that you need to or have to do. So, true concentration. There's um, the thing that is the problem about having true concentration how many of you know of monkey mind? The monkey mind, yes. The one that's going to jump from thought to thought to thought to thought. I have very active monkeys. Do you? <laughs> you know? Of course we do. It's like, da 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 Especially if I have coffee. Okay, so that's even more of that. Um, you might have the squirrel mind, which is distraction, 
Distraction, distraction, distraction. Um, there's also the puppy mind. When you get a puppy in your training, a puppy, puppies just want to run and play. Be, and you're training them. Sit. Come back and sit. It's the same with my mind when I'm trying to do meditation. It's like the mind wants to run off, and it's like, sit. So we have these monkey minds, squirrel minds, puppy minds, and what they really are describing is the restless mind. The restless mind that we all get to deal with because our thoughts are continually coming and going, and there are actually so many thoughts are calling our attention that we're actually start wasting time and energy. And you all have had the opportunity where you weren't focused and you spilled something or something happened and you know, I wasn't focused. Is focus important? Absolutely. What happens though, because our world is so multi everything that it becomes a habit. We don't even know how unfocused we really are because we're just accustomed to it. It's natural. There are benefits to learning the skill to develop that mental muscle called concentration. And some of those skills include, or, or benefits I'm going to talk about, is first of all, you are more peaceful if you're able to control your thoughts. And peace and happiness go together. The skill of concentration, you can get a better memory. You have more confidence when you are more focused. You have a greater inner strength. You have the ability to focus your thoughts. And again, don't let your mind focus you. I can have a mind, but the mind is here to serve. I'm not here to be the servant of my mind. Although it seems sometimes I feel like it is controlling me. But that's what we're talking about this month. Spiritual authority, self-mastery, and concentration. I take the power. I have the power to choose what I think about. I can think about things that bring me down or bring me up. That's on me. I do have some control. Not of the outer world, but of what I'm thinking. And that doesn't mean to dismiss your thoughts. Sometimes our thoughts are there and they need to be looked at and see what's behind that thought and is it even true. It goes into Byron Katie's work, which I'm not going to get into today. So to be able to move through life with more clarity and focus. You all feel good when you got that focus and you feel like, yeah, I'm on it. Versus the scattered, yes? Okay, okay, just checking. Now here's a great example of when you're not focused. You get a book you have to read for a class or for work. You have something that you're supposed to read. You get your book and you're ready to read it. And you read a few sentences. Oh, I'm hungry. I got to get something to eat. You go to the kitchen, you get your little thing come back over and sit down and you start reading again. All of a sudden you hear somebody talking outside your place and you're like, oh, now I'm listening to what they, uh, oh, I better get back to reading, reading. Getting a little restless with this reading. Turn on some music for background. <laughs> I come back and I'm, I'm reading. Start to think about something that happened yesterday. And now I'm thinking about that. I look at my watch and an hour's gone by and I've read maybe a page. What's up with that, right? You, any, I know you can, anybody relate? Yeah, hello. So, so this is what happens when we don't have the concentration. Ability. We haven't developed our mental muscle. Would you like to know how to have that true concentration mental muscle? Do you want to know how you can build that up? Okay, good. You're in the right place then. <laughs> so first of all, we can build our mental muscle anytime, anywhere throughout the day. Okay. So you don't have to set aside time, although that is something I am going to suggest as well. 
So you can hold your mind on whatever it is that you are doing. It is a practice. It is like you don't go to the gym once. No, this is your practice for the week. You get to go, am I focused? Or am I thinking about 100 million other things? Well, I'm eating. Focus on the food. Focus on the food. This is a real discipline. I, I can tell you, it will not be the easiest thing for me to do, but I am committed to doing it this week. So being present to the food when I'm eating, instead of eating and reading and a hundred other things, which I tend to do. Next, when you're taking a shower, be present as you are washing your body. Be paying attention to each part of your body as you are washing your body. When you're doing anything, cooking, be present to your cooking. Be present to mowing the grass or gardening. Be present to cleaning. It is so easy to be somewhere else when you're cleaning, right? I'm going to challenge you to put your mind on it. It doesn't have to be all day long, but practice. Build this muscle up. This is your key. Because once you start to practice this ability to concentrate and focus, other things will start to be more focused. Again, it's a muscle. And it's a mental muscle that you're going to get to work on this week. And then you can continue. I wouldn't say just go to the gym for one week and you're a master. But to continue uh, focusing. When you're at the gym working out. When you're walking. When you're exercising. When you're reading. You focus. There is a formal exercise that you can also do. You can take a candle and light a candle and look at it and see how long you go without having a thought. <laughs> Good luck with that, you know? And back to the candle. You are training your puppy mind to focus, to sit, boo-boo. <laughs> sit. Good boo-boo. <laughs> I'm on the candle. So I'm going to give you some tips because these are some things you can do, but this is your tips to finding focus. And I'm going to use the acronym FOCUS, because that helps me, right? It helps me to focus using FOCUS. So the F stands for find fun in your focus. Don't make it like a chore, like, oh, God, i got to read and i got to, like, focus now. Or, you know, that is, we actually get resistant as kids sometimes. I have to study. I'd rather go out and play. We want to make this fun. There's a lot of things you can do in game land. I was thinking about as a kid, there was a game called concentration, right? You'd have all the cards turned over and you'd turn them over and then you'd have to try and remember which, where they were and so that you can find your matches. There was another uh, game that I played as a kid and I kept thinking it's the name of it's got to be concentration. So... See if you can know what it is. You have a board, and it's, there's a body, and there's these little bones, and you have this little tweezers. Operation. operation. <laughs> you have to have a lot of concentration in that game. Yeah. I thought it should have been called concentration. I had to look it up on Google last night. I'm like, the game where you take bones out of the body. <laughs> <laughs> operation. But if you didn't concentrate... That, you, um, you know, surgeons better be concentrating, not over there. Sometimes I watch these TV shows where they're like the, the medical places, and they're like chatting about a whole bunch of other things. They are not appear to be focused on the thing. <laughs> Don't be talking about your vacation, your boyfriend, your girlfriend. Focus. So find those games. Uh, Sudoku. There are a lot of things probably on, on, online that you can use your memory. Crossword puzzles. Um, what else is, was there? There was a couple others that I wrote down. Word search. There's memory games. Find it. Make it fun. Give yourself an activity. What am I going to do today that's fun that can practice my focus? You don't have to make this a chore. Then you have O, and that stands for what I've already talked about, open to opportunities. Oh, I'm walking. I can 
focus on the fact that I'm walking and my feet are touching the ground. Okay, open to opportunities throughout the day. Am I focused? I'm focusing now. The C stands for to commit. I like this, the commitment to focusing. There's a little practice you can do where you have a task that you have to do or you're choosing to do for the next 10 minutes. I'm going to do my paperwork. I'm going to do my finances. I'm going to do whatever it is that I don't really want to do and I don't find that it's very pleasurable and I'm focusing on it. You simply, before you start that task, decide how many minutes you want to do. Take a breath in, close your eyes, you hold it, you let it go, and then you just speak a sentence similar to, I commit to spending however many minutes or hours on this task, using the power of my mind to be completely focused in completing this task. You would be surprised. You think that's pretty simple, that's easy to do. That can actually set you up for success because you're telling your mind what you are doing with it. You give yourself that, oh, I'm focusing for the next hour on this. And sometimes it's 10 minutes. I'm focusing for 10 minutes on putting these papers in their filing cabinet. That was easy. And, and so when I tell myself I'm going to do it, it seems to be easier. Again, you get to commit. The U stands for using your mind. Use your mind, and I actually have a, an affirmation that says, you, I use my mind to create more good. I use my mind to create more good. Say it. I use my mind to create more good. I use my mind to create more good. Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. <laughs> And to using that you for using my mind to create more good means that I also have, I look up, I have uplifting thoughts. I use my mind to create more good with the you of uplifting thoughts. I get to choose my thoughts. Victoria does not get to choose my thoughts for me, and neither does Charlotte. I get to choose my thoughts. I don't like a thought, guess what? I get to choose again. We talked about on self-mastery week one. Okay, now we're on the S. So you got find fun, open opportunities, see, commit, uh, use your mind, uplifting thoughts. And the S stands for you set aside time and schedule time for your practice. For five minutes, I'm going to take the time and really focus. Set that up. Because focusing on whatever we're focusing on, we get more of. That is our teaching. What you focus on, you get more of. The question is, what are you focusing on? And in closing, I believe that this verse from the Bible pretty much tells us the best thing to focus on, especially when you focus on the right page. <laughs> Philippians 4, 8. Paul says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think on these things. She goes on to say, each of these things points to the ideal found only in our infinite divine self, the source of which is divine. Focus on divine honor, divine justice, divine love. Direct your attention to these attributes. The object of our focus and attention is the I am, the spiritual self the Holy Spirit of the divine that is our true nature. I love the Bible for seek ye first the kingdom of God, of heaven, which is found within. And it's righteousness, and I like to say right useness, and all these things will be added unto you. If we only focus, 
there will be no more obstacles in our way. And we will truly see clearly now. And so it is.